the first thing we need to do is to identify the scope of the project. This is constrained by the hardware available to me and my ability to imagine how to implement it. Since I have a few cylinders, one three-way solenoid and one dump valve and three photo eyes, I figured I could arrange it to use the first photo eye to burst air at the feet or legs of the trick-or-treater, getting their attention. Next, I could use the longest piston to have a ghoul jump up towards them. The first part is easy, depending upon the consistency of your environment. By directly connecting the photo eye to the dump valve, each time the beam is broken, the valve solenoid fires. Again, if the photo eye was only blocked once and then unblocked, it would be a single spit. But since people have two legs, it ended up having a lot of jitter, so that needed to be fixed. But first, let's look at the second action, because that has a similar problem. When the second photo eye is broken, the extend solenoid is activated and it jumps out at the end of the stroke. The extended sensor breaks the electrical connection and makes the retract connection. If, when the retracted sensor is active, the photo eye is still blocked, it will jump out again and again until unblocked. These relay logic circuits are simple and made with salvaged equipment so I don't pay industrial prices for having an amusing device. I was not going to add more electrical equipment I didn't already own. When attempting to design relay logic, the strategy has been to design the simplest version and add one feature at a time. I'll use the jumping ghoul as an example. Code on relay logic and normally open and normally closed contacts. Making electrical contact with the coil causes it to energize, transferring the electrical connection from the common side normally closed contact to the normally open contact. Like the airburst circuit, we could just directly connect that output to the solenoid, but then the beam has to stay broken for the pressure to be maintained, so we need to have it trigger and stay active. This means we can use a memory circuit, where a second parallel relay with a normally open contact is connected to one side to the 24 volts DC, then the other to the relay coils. So from the default state, the photo eye closes the relay, then the other relay maintains that power. Of course, then we need for the solenoid to be deactivated upon reaching its destination. Destination. For that, we add a normally closed contact in series with the memory circuit, which is activated by the extended sensor. This way, when the ghoul is extended, that circuit can be deactivated. Now, because this cylinder requires being driven in both directions, we then have to activate the retract solenoid. So using the same relays, normally open contact, we can use another memory circuit to activate and maintain that solenoid until it reaches the retracted position again. So we'll add the retracted relay normally closed to the retract solenoid circuit, so it's deactivated upon reaching its destination. We also don't want to be able to activate both solenoids at once because that will not work for us, so we will add another contact to the extend circuit. This one will be of the normally open of the retracted sensor relay so that the photo eye cannot activate the extend solenoid until it's in the retracted state. Pretty much covers. So now there's something to be said for adding a delay to the activation and reactivation. But my only on-delay timer is hard at work on my solar system, so I thought I would use a Shelly 2.5 from another project which is on hold as too many of mine are. The hope was to be able to delay the activation so it wouldn't be too obnoxious. I was not able to do this as well as I had hoped, unfortunately. I did reduce it a little bit by converting the input to be a motion detect or activation-based input, which meant it would activate the circuit and then the timer would leave it on for the amount of time I set. This worked okay for the airburst circuit, but not amazingly for the ghoul circuit. Since next time I'll get another on delay or potentially replace it with a programmable system. I have a can Arduino calling out to be used, but I wanted to make this out of relay logic this time. Next time we'll make it programmable. Another quick improvement I made was to use a resisting one way valve on the extend pneumatic circuit. This means that while extending, the full airflow and pressure is available. But while retracting, the flow is restricted by the variable resistance, so it retracts slower than it extends, slowing the rate at which he can be cycled. Probably should have just cranked that up a little bit more. Anyways, thanks for listening to me ramble about circuits. Hope you learned something.